If I gave you 10,000 bucks this morning, what would you buy for, for 2020 in the banking world? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. I think it's been a great year for the banks. Um, their structural soundness and, um, and their benign backdrop really hold, holds, should hold them in good stead for 2020. I think, I think J.P. Morgan, from the bondholder perspective, is really uh, the best bank out there. From the bondholder perspective, not an equities perspective. That's right. That's right. From, it, it's a great question for an equity holder, but, but the important point for bondholders is we look at uh, those banks that have diversified businesses, strong balance sheets, and, um, and uh, durable deposit franchises and, and terrific asset quality. And what kind of yield am I going to get if I'm a J.P. Morgan bondholder? You'll, you'll get a yield, <coughs> excuse me, you'll get a yield that'll, that'll carry your coupon and you'll get some compression too. J.P. Morgan is the sleep easy at night bank story for 2020. But you don't like the equity. I'm back to Andrew's original question. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a great question for, for my equity counterparts. I, I think uh, certainly uh, the top line of banks will be impacted by uh, lower rates right now. Um, but we like the, you know, if you look at J.P. Morgan's third quarter revenues, $29.3 billion record revenues. The banks that have uh, levers to, to mitigate against flattening margins are the banks that are going to, I think, really right. thrive in a low interest rate environment. Uh, hey, John, uh, one bank that's been in the news and the headlines pretty much sure. throughout uh, 2019 and not necessarily in a good way has been Wells Fargo. They are trying to turn the page do they in 2020, and do you give them your money? I think it's a great question. So Wells Fargo has, still has some wood to chop. They're not out of the woods yet. I think uh, the uh, installation of Charlie Scharf as their CEO has been a good step. They're still subject to the Fed asset cap, so I think they have some, a, a ways to go. And, and costs are an issue, uh, increasingly a focus for Wells Fargo. But their asset quality is uh, pretty good. Um, you know, ultimately... Rates won't make or break a bank, but poor underwriting will. But Wells Fargo does have some wood to chop. What? You know, I was just, just sitting here thinking while John was talking about J.P. Morgan, just how well managed yep. that company is. And then you asked a question about Charlie Scharf, one right. of the diaspora. There's just so many great managers that come out of J.P. Morgan that run banks, that run fintech companies. John, do you think that's J.P. Morgan's secret sauce? I, I really do. I think no one's, no one's ever going to make money betting against J.P. Morgan. It's a, it's a terrific American institution. It's got a deep management bench, and it's, it's got proven leadership that has really fanned out across the financial spectrum and, and gone on to do great things. I think it's, it, it's really a terrific institution. The, the, the other bank with a lot of continuity, great management, is, is Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Brian Moynihan. I don't know how long he's been there, but, but many, many years since the financial crisis. What, what, what are your thoughts on Bank of America? I, I think that's an absolutely uh, terrific point as well. I think Brian Moynihan's done a fantastic job orchestrating all the change at Bank of America. The bank has come a long way from the throes of the credit crisis. They could have filled a football stadium with all the servicers that were working out soured mortgage loans. And right now, uh, losses are at uh, just absolutely minuscule levels, 30 34 basis points at their third quarter for portfolio-wide losses. Um, and their capital levels are, are great while they're returning money to patient shareholders. So really a good story for bondholders and shareholders alike at, at Bank of America. Uh, John, final question for you. Consolidation sure. in 2020, do you think it's likely? Is it possible? Will regulators allow it, and what should we look for? Sure. Another great question. I mean, we saw, we saw SunTrust and BB&T come together and, to form Truist. I, I think, if anything, we'll see some maybe, maybe some more regional bank consolidation. Uh, but for the larger banks, uh, with, with their large deposit footprints, I think maybe more tuck-in acquisitions on the margin um, in areas where they want to uh, seek to um, further uh, penetrate.